What's up everybody, Steve here. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about the Florida housing market. And speaking of Florida, I've got our boy Aiden here with me hey. today. And now Aiden has a channel. If you guys like Florida, you wanna learn more about Florida, his channel is called Experience Florida. And he brings you through different experiences and talks about uh, a lot of different things throughout the state of Florida. So I'm gonna link his channel in the description below. And uh, it's a really cool channel. He's got one video that exploded. What uh, what what video is that on the hurricane? How many views did you get on that? Uh, 400,000. 400,000 views on that one video. So be sure you support his channel if you guys do like Florida, wanna learn more about Florida, I'll link his in the description below. And let's get into the article. All right, so I came across this article. It's the Florida real estate market, will it crash in 2023? It goes on to say January 2023, year over year, the number of homes sold dropped by 38.1%. Remember a handful of months ago, a lot of people in Florida were saying, look, the Florida housing market is never gonna slow down, it's never gonna drop, there's so many people moving to Florida, but this just is not the case. Florida was the hottest market post pandemic, but it has significantly slowed down. In 2023, experts forecast that the Florida home prices can fall up to 20%. And if we come down here to Florida real estate market trends, we can see the median list price index year over year is almost down 12%. Median sales price is up 5.8% year over year. Number of homes sold is down eight, uh, down a staggering 38%. Homes sold above list price down 18%. Homes sold with price drops up 12%. Homes sold to list price down 2%. Median days on market is up 17 uh, days year over year, and we're averaging about 47 days on market currently for homes. So this is part of the article that I really want to concentrate on because we always have to be careful of what we're looking at and the information that we're taking in and making sure that we're not necessarily relying 100% on it. So it goes on to say five reasons why the housing market is unlikely to crash. The number one thing is low inventory. We've been talking about that. Uh, as per January 2023, we only have a 3.8 month supply of inventory. However, not too long ago, we were at like 1.2 month supply of inventory. And as I mentioned, a healthy real estate market is about six to seven months supply of inventory. So it is increasing steadily. And we've talked about in other previous vid videos in terms of the shadow inventory that could come and that could completely change the amount of inventory that we have on the market. The next thing is lack of newly constructed housing supply. A lot of people out there are just saying because we had this huge lag of um, builders not developing and not building that we have such a large demand for new housing. Uh, number three, several new buyers are strong demand for homes across various demographics. Millennial and Hispanics are in the prime buying years. And uh, number four, strict lending standards. There are several cases of liar loans in 2007 where anyone could get a mortgage without a credit check. Today's lenders place high standards on borrowers and most home buyers have excellent credit scores. Number five, drop in foreclosures. A majority of homeowners own significant, significant equity in their homes. And I've been saying this in other videos, as quickly as equity increased, it could decrease. And we've saw, we've seen over the last handful of months that $2.3 trillion worth of home equity has just disappeared like that. Now quickly, I wanna bring you guys to another article that says housing market expected to level out in 2006. This is from uh, April 11th, 2006. It says new housing market will likely level out in 06 as sales of existing and new homes are expected to cool in coming quarters according to National Association of Realtors. And then if we jump over to this Wall Street Journal um, talking about a housing bubble, July 28, 2005. Um, now this article is very compelling in terms of if back then you read this person's article and you actually believe what they were saying and they were believing their own BS is what they were saying as well, then you probably would have been put into a precarious position in terms of maybe some bad real estate investments. This guy says, if you want to be scared out of your wits these days, you basically have two choices. Go watch Steven Spielberg's latest 
or listen to the hysterical warnings of economists and journalists about imminent popping of our so-called housing bubble. Robert Schiller, uh, the Yale economist, says home prices could fall 50% from their peak, taking things a step further. The economist recently went as far as calling the global housing boom the biggest bubble in history. And this guy says, the reality is there is no housing bubble in this country. Again, this article is from 2005 by Neil Barsky. Um, over the past quarter century, there have been an explosion of second home purchases, a continued influx of immigrants, and a significant reduction in existing housing inventory through teardowns. Now, it's important as we look in the past about these articles, how much information is pretty relative to today's stories as well. What we do have is a serious housing shortage and housing affordable crisis. That's exactly what we're experiencing right now as well. We're seeing it all over the news, housing crisis, housing affordable affordability issues. What we have never seen in this country is a collapse of home prices without also seeing local economic weakness or significant, significant capacity growth. Absent those factors, housing markets just don't collapse under their own weight. And then lastly, he says, anyone waiting for prices to collapse before buying a home is likely to be in for a disappointment. Now you guys can make your own judgment in terms of that article back in 2005 and the articles that we are seeing today in the news. There are agendas that a lot of these news companies have, and unfortunately, not viewers like yourselves that are watching this channel, but a lot of other people have no clue as to what's going on and what the truth is. And unfortunately, if they are reading articles like this, they may be inclined to go out over leverage and put themselves in a bad position in terms of their uh real estate acquisition. As mentioned, be sure you guys check out Aiden's YouTube channel, Experience Florida. I'll put the link in the description below. And as always, I appreciate you guys being here with me today and I'll see you guys on the next video. See you.